and welcome to Detrix AI tutorial. Today we're going to look on how to use the platform by solving a generic demand forecasting use case. Uh, if you go to our Detrix AI website and switch to platform overview tab, uh, you will see the sample of how our platform looks like and as well you will be able to select the try now. Uh, if you click the button, it will automatically forward you to the sign up page. Uh, I'm already signed up, so I can skip this step. Uh, this, uh, on the first screen, you will be able to select the projects you've been working on, as well as create a new project. We're going to pick the letter. Um, for now, uh, your project has a generic name, so let's change that name to Demand Forecasting. One one. Um, there are a couple of sample data sets already available over here. Uh, this list is going to expand with time as well as you can upload your own data set. For now, let's look at the regression data set we're going to use for demand prediction. Let's increase the fund a bit. And the very first thing we need to do is clean up our data set a bit. So if, if you look at the data brick itself, uh, it says the data node is available here and data nodes can currently be previewed. So for example, if you check this box, you will see the preview of the, of the data set itself. We have four columns named date, sales, store, and open. Uh, the data is a date variable. Sales is just like a big number. Store is then ID and open is the binary variable that switches between zero and one for when the store is open or closed. Let's say we we don't really like the name open. We would like to rename it to is open because that's a bit more straightforward. The zero one stands for is the store open or not. You can select the columns here right away and rename it. So is open is gonna be the new, the new name for that specific column. Uh, let's say you want to filter the rows and we're gonna do just that. We're gonna select only one store out of all the ones we have. So press the little button uh, of plus again, select the column you need to filter. We're gonna filter on store. We're gonna pick the double equal sign and select one. That means we're just gonna look at the store that has the ID of one. Now we're gonna split the data. Uh, you need this in order to see how well your model will work on the data it has never seen before. So you can see that split data has two nodes called train and test. Um, the train should be bigger because we, we would like to train our model on as big uh, a data set as possible. Uh, the test could be like relatively small. For our specific use case, we're going to select like one and a half percent. That's roughly going to equal to 14 days or two weeks of, of the sale data. Um, the next one thing we would like to do is start working with the model itself. So if we select the machine learning tab, we can select the models. We're going to pick the profit at first and we're going to train the model. So you can see that this brick, for example, has two outputs. So we're going to connect the model to the model node. We're going to select and pick the train data set and feed it into the train model. And right away, the train model says, hey, something is wrong. There is a small exclamation mark here. And also you can see that there is a notification saying error, nor target variable selected and default variable cannot be implied. Uh, that means you, you need to do something with this specific brick. So for example, there are two drop down windows called date column and target variable. Let's pick out a date column and let's figure out like what we would like to predict. We would like to predict sales. So let's pick that. And now, the brick should be clean and it's like yeah everything is good everything should be fine until uh, this point so last time last thing we would like to do is do the predictions themselves again it needs two um two nodes connected to it one is the model we're going to feed the uh, trained model into the predict brick the other one is the data it had never seen before the test data and now we can just press the run button it says pipeline is not editable while running, but fortunately you can move the bricks around and make the uh, make the pipeline a bit more 
appealing to the eye. Also, you can see the colors change. The green stands for calculation in progress. The gray one, it's just pending. The blue one, calculation in, is complete. And there is also a red color for uh, cases when there are some errors. We can see that pipeline is successfully finished. Everything is blue and we can generally like start looking at the numbers now. So for example, we can uh, press the train model and look into model performance. It says like, here are a few metrics. Uh, the one we're currently looking on are R squared. 69% is not too bad if, if we consider we spend like four minutes building this pipeline. And also we can look at the predict and figure out how well the data uh, uh, that was unseen um, by the model was, was used to predictions. And we can see the R squared is actually 81, which is, which is quite a bit better. And truth be told, that was a bit expected because we're only trying to predict two weeks into the future. And the, product, uh, the profit model is quite good for that. Also, what you can do is have a preview of the output itself. So here you can see that we have 14, uh, 14 days that were used for predictions. And you can see the actual sales, the store again, we can see the store is equal to one. If you remember, we filtered only the store. Uh, we can see the flag if the store was open and then we can see the white hat. White hat is the predicted, predicted sales. And we can see the model works relatively, relatively well uh, on the week, uh, week offs. It doesn't predict anything on the weekdays. We, we have the sales that are quite similar to the actual sales uh, of the store. You can download this, uh, this predictions right away to a computer. And yep, this is, this is the end of the tutorial. In the future, we plan to also add uh, additional data sets. We plan to add uh, the templates for the pipeline. So for example, you would not need to start with a blank canvas. You will be able to have um, a pipeline like this ready at the very beginning and you will just need to feed in your data. Um, yep, yeah, and that's pretty much it. And thank you for, for your time.